Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to week four of CS one seventy. Uh, hope uh, I saw your comments. Uh, one that I would like to address is uh, that you can just email me if you want to schedule a Zoom session and we can figure something out. Uh, one more thing I would to take concern is uh, yeah, some people message me like they had made a resubmission in the assignment. So just wanted to make that clear that you can make any number of submissions that you want. And the latest one, which is submitted would be considered for evaluation. Uh, I should be releasing the grades for uh, assignment two shortly, like after this Friday, once the uh, its uh, due date is over or the acceptance date is over. And further on going uh, forth from this week, you can expect the same time for the upcoming uh, assignments, scores to be released. So coming to this week's recitation, uh, this is again on HTML and we are gonna be covering a short concept and doing some exercises. Again, I would suggest that this is a hands-on recitation. So please uh, like download the material, open up the slides and follow the video. And whenever there would be a pause or there's a task, just pause the video and try yourself. And then you can see my solution. I would suggest that this is the best way for making the best use of the recitation. So I would suggest you doing that. So just giving an overview for what we'll be learning today. So we are gonna be covering CSS and we are gonna be creating menus using some lists and applying classes to refine menu styles. So most of it would be based on CSS and how to use it and how to use it for your web page. And because you have learned all the functionalities like adding a link, adding images and trying them, this uh, this week's more focus would be on like on the appearance of your web page and styling of your web page, which we have covered a little bit, but uh, a more refined version of that or more refined techniques uh, we'll learn this week. So for this week's file, go ahead. I have the link in my uh slides so you can follow and download these two files uh, have them in the same folder and open your vs code and have these files there and you can just open and see if there's anything new this is the similar needle and paradox uh, minor changes might be there but these are the same and going forward we're we going to be working on these two files for this recitation and just open them and run them on your uh, VS code and see them on your browser that everything is fine. These are the two files. So coming to uh, CSS, it stands for cascading style sheets. And as it said, style sheets, it basically considered the styles and styles broadly cover would cover like a background color, text color, alignment, and all this stuff comes under style and there's different ways of styling your web page. And we're gonna be covering all of those. So first thing is inline styling. So this is for directly applying a style inside an HTML component. So if you recall, there's two, two elements that we studied, which is tag and the attributes. So tags are basically like an anchor tag, body tag, which are like standalone tags, which are the functionality of your web pages. And attributes are, are the things that control the behavior of your tags. For example, in the image tag, we used SRC, which was the source. We used alt if the image is not displayed. So it is controlling the property of the image, width and so on. So first is we use style as an attribute to different tags. And the interesting thing about style is it's also it can also be used as a tag and also it can be used as an attribute. So we'll see. So let's start with applying float left style to the image tag so we can use image. So let me just start and run the files first. So I have the files with me. So this is Netherlands and this is the paradox.html. Uh, I'll just run the paradox or I should have ran the other one. Let me go to Netherlands and run this file. So I'm gonna be running it on Chrome. So as you can see, 
this is our file so first thing is i want the table and image to be together so one way of doing it is using the style tag here in image as i mentioned in the style so just to style is equal to so this is uh, how i'm using it as a attribute to the image tag and i'll say float and left so this is how style as an attribute works in the double quotes you give all the properties you want to change or you want to do styling of so property and column value so property is floating and i want my image to float left so let's see what happens float left i'll save this and if i go and refresh we can see it now it's floating on the left and the table comes uh, on its side okay so coming to the next task uh, try and load the netherlands.r for html page in browser and okay so i did this one no issues uh that was easy right just adding uh, we were just adding style as an uh, attribute so second is changing the text round uh, background text uh, background and text color so now we're going to be using style inside the body tag so go ahead and try this on your own so use style is equal to and have the background color as black so that this is like property is background color and its value is black then i have semicolon the property again which is color and with that is the color of the text colon yellow which is its value so uh, pause the video and try making these changes okay so let me just uh, come out of it so you can like rather than typing anything like you can also copy so i'm just copying you can type you want and where is the body tag so inside the body tag because i'm using it, it as an attribute i'll do like this you see this uh because of you see it helps us like you can change the color here like this as well on the color palette or you can just name the color and work like that so now i save it and if i reload it you see so the background color is black and this is yellow text color okay so coming to the next task so this time we'll try using it as an attack so make a additional entry in the head so inside the head tag apart from the title uh, just copy this code style and this tells you that between these tags uh, opening of style tag and i think it's my bad it's close style and it tells the body color to be lime so it wants to change the text color to line and save and reload and see if it works. So pause the video and try and make this change. Okay. So if you had followed me correctly till now, you'll see that there's no change that that's occurring. So if I have this in my code and I save and reload it, I see there's no change, but if i just remove this because it's a conflict right uh, if i just remove this and save it you'll like you'll be wondering that this is might not be the right way to use it but if i do like this we can see the color is it's actually working when we are not using it inside the body tag so why this is happening is because there's a conflict so the style in the body tag is telling the text color to be yellow and the style tag is inside the head is telling the color to be line. So there is a conflict here. And in the case of conflict, whichever uh, property is closest to the text that wins. So as this is in the head tag, so this and this style tag in the body is closer to the text. So uh, the HTML will use this value of color rather than using line color. 
So I'm just gonna keep it as yellow and save it. So yeah, this is all that I covered. Now adding style to a particular text. So this is a new tag that we haven't seen before. And this is the span tag. And span tag is used to basically highlight something or highlight a, a certain line or a text. So right now, uh, like we make the use of bold and italic tag, span is similar to that. But the good thing about span tag is like it can have like more things as well. Like instead of bold and italics, this helps you format and uh, we can use the style attribute inside the span tag itself. So suppose you want a single line to be in a separate color and a separate font, then I think span tag is more useful. So this is how you use it, like similar to any tag. Sorry. So we'll have the span tag opening and closing and inside it the text we want to format and then the attribute would be style and there would be some properties inside it that we would want to change so let's do this task so locate the wording adenis mountains in the geographical data section on the netherlands page and change these two words mentioned and have them as color as red and font as arial and color i think we have used before how to do that uh, in the style tag and the, for the second property use font family colon arial so take a few minutes and pause the video and try doing these changes and see if it works or not okay so i hope you have tried it and now i'm gonna be locating it Ardenus mountains Okay, so, this, so this is where it is and I'm going to be using span tag. So I want these two letters inside it. So this would how my span tag would look and inside the span tag, I'll use the style attribute. And I would say equal to double column. So I want the color to be, what do I want the color to be? Red and text to be area. So red, so property colon color uh, value. And then I put a semicolon and I say font family. So see, there's a lot of options. So this is how uh, ID helps you. So if you are sometimes are forgetting the name of an attribute or how to use it, it will give you suggestions and most likely you'll remember on seeing it. And I say, and it gives you suggestion for the fonts as well. So let's do area. Oh no, I just want area in this. So. Now let's save it and see if it's working. So where's the hardness mountains? So you see it's in red color and it's formatting is also different. So this is another way we can use uh, the style to basically change the properties of uh, a certain part of the text rather than the whole body. Now uh, let's see creating, how can we create menus and menus is basically like in a website, you have a lot of menus, like going to this page, this page and so on. And we're gonna be trying that using the CSS file. So like one natural question at this point, which comes is uh, why do we need a CSS file when we can style every web page on our own and we can customize it every web page differently. But where it's used is to standardize things, like to have a like a constant color scheme or a contrast scheme across your website, which may have many web pages. So having a single CSS file will help you have a same formatting or a same font wherever you want, or all your tables to look like the same. So to have this uniformity, we have the CSS files and we use them in all of our HTML files. Um, it is similar to like how you use themes for like my presentation. I use this theme 
to have a, or like because I do not want all the slides to look different because it doesn't come across as very uh, aesthetically pleasing if I should say. So using the CSS file. So we'll just create a CSS files. So instead of I'm just create a CSS, how to create a CSS file, just write a name and have the extension dot CSS. That's simple enough. And this is the task. So create a file called mymenu.css and whatever I've written in the uh, picture here, just add it to your CSS file. So type this out and save it for now. And then we'll see how to move forward. So pause the video, make a file called mymenu.css and have this text, type out this text in that. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same. I'll not use my file and make a new file just so you know. So it will be my menu dot CSS. So you see it comes as a different thing because it's not an HTML file. And let's see what do I have to write? Well dot left menu. List style type and So here, if you notice, you have seen some of the things before, like li, ul, you know what li, li is the list item, ul is that. So basically we are defining a certain class for them and we'll see how we can use that. One side I'm defining as 20 pixels. you know a, a is our anchor tag so basically left menu is a class i am creating so that it doesn't whatever properties of css file i'm using it doesn't automatic uh, automatically apply to all the a tags this is the purpose of creating that Um, this is a special thing of hover. We'll see. This is a very interesting thing, and you will see its use soon. Okay, so this is our CSS file, but right now it's not related to anything in our main any of the HTML files and we'll see how to do that. So let's see how to create a menu. So first thing we want to do is use our style sheet inside uh, our HTML page. So this is how you link it. So this is done using a link tag and this doesn't have any closing tag. So pay attention to that. And we link tag is used in the head section of an HTML file and this must be outside any other sections that are already present so so we'll switch to netherlands file and link my menu.css to this file so just use i'm just going to use this um, in the netherland file inside the head i'll just use this and so 
so we want to link a style sheet and the name here we'll give it so make sure it's in the same folder otherwise it will not work so i write my menu.css and i save it but if we see there's no changes yet because we have linked the css file but we still haven't created a menu or had the tags which will use this left menu uh, class so we haven't still called the class from the css file we now our HTML file can access the CSS file, but it uh, we have not used the classes yet, which is the left menu class. So going forward, we'll be doing that. So that is adding classes. So this is how you add class. So it is used as an attribute. So inside any tag, we say class is equal to left menu. So class equal to double columns and the name of the class, whichever you have created in CSS. So we named our class left menu. You can have it as any other name, but make sure you use the same name when you are defining that class name. So this is your main task. So create the menu uh, right below the body tag in the Netherlands file this way. So this is as a list. So create this and save the Netherlands file and see that if it's working, so this is Netherlands and Paradox. And now what we will do is have an anchor tag around both the list items so that it's it links to the Netherlands file. Netherlands links to the Netherlands file and Paradox links to the uh, paradox.html file respectively. And after doing that, see if the links are working that it's going there. And once you have done that, uh, add the CSS class left menu in the ul li and a tags and see how it's different now so it's like a three subtask in it but it's fairly easy the first two should be fairly easy after the first two previous two recitations and add the link we put in netherlands to the paradox file by copying and pasting it in the same location in the paradox file so do the same for the paradox file once you have this menu ready and working first three paste it in the nether uh, paradox file and see if it's working or not. So this is the task. Take some minutes, try if it's uh, however many steps you can do and then I'll do it with you. Okay, so let me start. So first we have to create this. So I'm just gonna copy this. And here, just after the body, we'll have this. So this is our menu. I'll just adjust this and we'll see if it's working or not. Okay, did I forget to save it? Okay, yeah, this is hair. So we have it here. I'll probably get it below the heading. Let me have it here. Or have it above geographical data. You can have it anywhere. It doesn't matter. I'm just. <laughs> okay. So this is our menu. So right now the menu doesn't work. So what we want to do is we want to link it. So we'll do how we use the anchor tag. So the Netherlands should go, it should come back to the same page, which is Netherlands.html, Netherlands underscore R4. So that's its correct name. So we'll say href equal to Netherlands underscore r four dot html and similarly we want paradox to go to paradox file and this is if you remember this is how we enclose like attach something to a link just add the anchor tag around it you could do similarly for images as you might have done in one of the assignments and this one should go to the paradox file. So I'll say paradox underscore r4.html. So I'll save it and see if my menu works now. 
So you see, if I click on Netherlands, I'm on the same file. If I click on Paradox, it takes me to the Paradox file. So my link is working, my menu is working. Now I want to style it using whatever things are defined in this. So now I'll start adding the classes to the UL tag. So you see uh, what will be applied to the UL class is what I defined for UL. So UL dot, if it's, if the UL tag has a class left menu, then it would be list style type none and it will be floating to the left. So I'll say class equal to left menu. And similarly, I'll do it for her. So we have defined certain different property for a list item tag as well. If you see, li also has a left menu class that tells the font size to be 20 pixels. A's left menu class tells it to be like this. And we'll do the same here. Class equal to left menu. And again, class equal to left menu. So let me just save it and see how it's, it's working out. Okay, this is not working right now. Class is equal to left menu, my menu.css. Delay dot left menu, then left menu. Hover. Okay, this is weird. My menu dot CSS, the style sheet. And then just remove what is not needed. Okay, just give me one second why this is not working. I think cover is working. The rest of it is not. The next color is purple and red. Okay, let me just see in the presentation. Okay, this the entire menu list we get in the same location. Okay, so I think this doesn't, uh, I'm having some issue in my local in linking the sheet, but I hope this works for you. Uh, I'll post an update over this uh, later in the week, but uh, this is the correct way. This is working in other systems as well. I think this is my local, which is not allowing me because of some random installation. So I hope this works for you. Uh, if it doesn't, don't worry. Uh, I'll post an update and see what's incorrect in this. Going forward, uh, let's see what's the CSS box model. So if we go to the link here, so this is just like a theory concept. So it tells you how the structure of a web page is there. So outside there's a margin, then it encloses the border which includes some padding and then there's your content of the web page. So basically this is the structure if you see explanation. So the context of the box is where text and images appear and a border that goes around padding and content. So for example, let's say if you increase the padding, so your 
content would be even smaller or if you increase the border uh, like the rest of them will be affected similarly so just a uh, cool concept to go through and coming to our one of the final tasks so we are going to be using a border tag so inside the h2 tag so add a border for the heading famous artists in netherland file by adding the style border equal to five pixels solid red so take a minute and try it out okay so let's see where we have famous artists and we this is the heading if you will see so uh, demographics so famous artists so inside the h2 here we'll use the style so this is supposed to let you know that uh, we can add borders inside uh, the uh, we can how we can add borders to a certain text okay style equal to border mm. i think this should work you know why it's giving an error though okay not yet border equal to five the x solid so solid hair is used for okay this should work now yep now you see the border is there so solid is supposed to say it's a solid line you can have dotted and other stuff as well and red is for the color this is how you can add like certain borders to it to your uh, text wherever you want okay and coming back to the presentation uh note that uh, link at the bottom of the page is hard to read so this is an exercise or a homework you can say so try adding to your css file uh, a and color of your choice so this will be automatically applied to the hyperlink text at the end of the file uh, at the end of the page for Margaret. So try it on your own and make sure uh, you don't forget to uh, give your quizzes and uh, assignments on time. I'll post a quick update or a post about the CSS file. Maybe if you guys might face the same problem as me, if some of you do. And make sure to mark your attendance. Uh, you should have like a good understanding of HTML and this will probably be our last HTML class and we're going to be starting something new going forward from the next recitation. So all the best and hope you have become a little familiar over these past few weeks with HTML. So let me know if you have any questions, comments or concerns.